Is it possible to recreate this render in one hour, 30 minutes, or 10 minutes? Let's find out. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Chafe, Team WNJ here. If you're new to this channel, my name is Julian or Chafe. On this channel, I will prove to you that the impossible is possible by doing so myself. So subscribe now and hit that bell icon to stay notified whenever I upload a new video every single week. With that out of the way, let's hop right into the first render. Now I'm going to start off by laying out the base geometry of the scene. This is all the ground and the walls and all the other assets. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see the render that I did in 1 hour 30 minutes. This was before I recorded just to make sure everything worked. Here's the sketch that I based all the renders off of. You can find the sketch available on my Patreon. It also has all the notes that I use and all the details that I use to kind of construct everything before I even started. Now here I'm adding a lot of detail onto the vending machine. When I was making the 1 hour 30 minute version, I realized that I could have spent a lot of time modeling instead of doing a lot of the texture stuff. So here I am putting a lot more detail in. As you can see on the original version, there aren't any, you know, the buttons on there aren't very detailed. There's just lots of black bars that don't have anything on there. I decided that in this version, I wanted to add the keypad correctly with an actual little display. And I also wanted to add the slot where you slide in your credit card as well as the coin slot. I did, however, forget to add the ejection slot for the coin in case you put in the wrong coin or whatever. Uh, there's also no confirm or decline button on the keypad, but I mean, this is what you can do in one hour, so we can complain. The modeling for this sort of stuff was relatively easy. All that stuff was just kind of cubes that were shaped in the correct, uh, into the correct shape. This one was a little bit different. This is using a bool. So I've created a cylinder, nulled out the edges a little bit because that's, you know, more realistic. Used a bool to carve out the cylinder shape to slide in the coin, but I also realized that I forgot to add the coin hole. It took a bit of fiddling there, but I decided to keep the bool there and just push in that coin slot in the base cylinder itself and it kind of worked. Now we're making the spring. All I'm doing for this is creating a helix spline, then adding a sweep nerbs onto that and then adding a circle as a sweep. Now in the original version, I only had three springs there because of a miscalculation, but this one has four springs. Uh, I'm not sure how many springs it's supposed to be in the vending machines, but you know, it fits. I'm I'm squishing down the tops and the bottoms of the vending machine there so I can hide some lights in there later on. Uh, and this is the glass. Now, pay close attention to what happens here. I set up the glass and I put it in the correct position. Now, I'm selecting all the edges of the vending machine so that I can bevel them. I'm also renaming all the files and putting them all under the vending machine object so I can move them all at once. Now here I am refining all the edges of the edge selection so that I can indeed put all of that into the MoGraph bevel selection. I decided not to do it on the inside because that caused a bit of finicky issues later on. And here I am dropping the bevel in and then everything just stops and everything disappears. I'm going, what's happening? What's going on here? It crashes. It actually crashes, and yet still somehow I'm able to do this all within one hour. So I restart and have to start all over from when I did the glass. Now I'm re-putting all the glass and I have to rename all the files once again, and then reselect every single edge on the vending machine, being very careful not to crash it this time. I have no idea what caused the crash, but I'm assuming that bevel tried to bevel every edge on the vending machine, including the edges on the springs and whatnot. But anyway, I select all the edges and I put on the bevel. I made a small mistake there by beveling the keypad as well. And that's gonna, that's gonna, you're gonna see how, why that's a mistake later on. But now we're moving on to the materials. I'm texturing the road. All these road textures were used in a previous project that I made. I'm gonna show you a flash right over here. That's, you know, a quick flash of what I made before. Uh, I can reuse that file, but I, I, in hindsight, I'm realizing now that the road texture should have been scaled up a little bit because there's no way a vending machine would be this big that, a, you know, like the, the crossroads on the floor would be that small. Uh, meanwhile, I also reset the resolution of the camera. So if you look at the bottom screen right there, that's what will be actually rendered. I take in a can for my content browser and I chuck it in the vending machine. At this point, I realize I've got a bit of a scaling issue because the can is way undersized. Uh, I also realized that the entire um, vending machine is just a bit too big. I drop in a, a rubbish bin right there because I realized that, you know, that was a little blank space. The back wall isn't textured. I retexture it right now. Again, this is an old texture used for an old project. I messed up here because the bottom, there's like a little curb at the end of the wall there. It's not really a curb, it's like a vertical curb. I forgot to texture that, but, you know, oh well. Uh, right here, I am 
I'm setting up the render settings. Here is the ambient occlusion, the glow, and the global illumination all set down to render fast. I also created an HDRI so I can get somewhat of a re realistic reflection. The bin doesn't have any reflection, so I just quickly gave it a small little iron texture. There you go. I rotated that for a second and it did some wonky things. There's also a cube there. I have no idea what that was, but I, I fixed that later on. Here I am scaling down the vending machine, realizing the can wasn't included in that. So I rescale that, rescale the bin, rotate it correctly this time, put it in the correct position. Cool, and it looks perfect. Now we actually need to give a texture for the rubbish, uh, so for the, uh, the vending machine. So we're gonna give it a little red texture. Whenever I think of a vending machine, I don't know why I always think of a red vending machine. So we're just gonna give it a red texture, give it a little bit of noise to break it up a little bit. I gave it a bump map and a, a displacement map for a rain texture, just to give it, you know, because everything was kind of rainy. I kind of had a murky, dark scene in my mind. It didn't really work out at the end because it just looked like it was very lumpy. I also did the same thing for the glass by adding that displacement and bump texture. You're gonna see in the final render that it looks way too bumpy, but there wasn't really much I could do about it. Here I am selecting the inside of the vending machine, dropping in a white luminescent texture. That's all it is. So it just, you know, glows a little bit when it renders out. I'm selecting the inside and all these parts are gonna be black and reflective. Uh, this is when the earlier, when I mentioned beveling the, uh, the keypad was a mistake. I'm trying to apply this iron texture onto the keypad, but it's doing some really funky sh stuff to me. So instead, I had to unselect all the edges and then manually bevel them myself instead of using the MoGraph bevel. So here I am doing that right now and I had to manually texture all of this. In hindsight, that's what I should have done in the very get-go. Uh, whenever you're, you're beveling a lot of stuff that's very tiny, messy things tends to happen, so you're better off just manually beveling them yourself. Here I am setting a white plastic material for the keypad and the blue little texture for the display. I don't know why I went with that blue. In my mind, I just thought, you know, it has a little retro feel to it. I really like getting these Neo Tokyo-esque futuristic Ghost in the Shell Blade Runner looking renders. That's kind of my thing. So, you know, those color schemes just tend to work well. Here I am adding that spotlight in. Uh, I made sure to turn off the edge fall off for the uh, volumetric lighting. Uh, added inverse, vo inverse volumetric fall off for the actual light itself. Positioned that right on top. It's kind of like a street lamp, uh, you know, pointing on a, 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 a one of these vending machines. Here I am adding a small little blue area light inside the vending machine. This, in, when, I, when I first did this, I thought that the blue would illuminate the inside of the vending machine, but of course that doesn't happen because th there's stuff in the way. However, this does give you some blue shadows, which is very interesting, and I quite like it. So I put one on the bottom, one on the top. Here's a cat from an old project file. I copy and paste the cat in, and it turns out to be humongous. Uh, scale that down to 0.4%, and we got a cute little cat there. I realized I'm running short on time now, so I had to hurry up. Uh, I realized the tail is a bit too straight, so I had to find the tail on the IK and relocate that. The poles are completely wrong, I had to recreate a pole on the fly. Tail was floating, I had to remove everything, took a bit of fiddling, but I finally got the cat to look halfway decent. I forgot to add reflection on the cat's texture, so even though everything is reflective because it's rainy, the cat isn't reflective, which kind of bugs me a little bit, but oh well. I had to tone down the redness of the vending machine and I'm good to render. I made a huge mistake earlier when I was setting the environment. As you can see, this render will look nothing like the original render. It's way too bright and it doesn't capture the environment. Why is that? Because of something that happened very quickly that was very easily missed, especially when I'm speeding this up by 500%. There's an environment object that creates a fog. In the original, I had a black fog that affects the background, meaning the HDRI wouldn't be as reflective. So I had to render all that that took seven minutes, go back, fix that, and re-render everything with the background fog. Now this is gonna look a lot more, no, no, a lot more closer to the original render, and somehow I managed to do all of this. I had to render it twice and crash once, all done within one hour. I believe this was done within 59 minutes, 30 seconds. Real clutch, but I managed to do it. So this, you know, quite accurate to what I did in one hour, 30 minutes. Of course, I, I still like the way everything was done in the one hour, 30 minute one. I had a bit more time to play around with it, but there's that. Here's what happens if I do it in 30 minutes. Starting off the same way, I'm gonna make up the, the base geometry, but instead, this time I'm gonna texture it first. What I realized after doing it in one hour is that I spend a lot of time fiddling with the textures and a lot of time fiddling with the models. So I thought, let me get the textures out of the way fast 
while I'm doing the geometry so I can get two birds out in one stone. And here you can see, I realized in the first render, I forgot to do that base little curb. So I'm gonna do that curb right now. I, <laughs> I spent a bit of time finding the texture because I couldn't find it for whatever reason. Finally found it, dragged it in, everything looks fine. Nothing hard there, it's just a little cement texture. And so the, the base setup is relatively similar. I managed to do the exact same thing for all three renders by setting up the ground. I think, no, in the final one, I had to cheat a little bit. But in this 30 minute one, I set up the ground and the walls in the exact same way, exact same texture, exact same reflection, all the same bump maps, dormo maps, same thing. Here I'm dragging in the HDRI studio again to get those reflections going on. I'm setting up all my render settings first this time so that I can position everything in the correct way, like including the camera, so that I don't have to fiddle around with the, comp uh, the uh, composition of the entire project. Adding in the light first, again, this goes back to the uh, composition of the project. I wanna make sure that everything is right so I don't have to keep on moving things into the correct position. Finally, here's the vending machine, last. Uh, you know, in, in, in the first version, I did this first. But I realized also that I'm spending too much time modeling the vending machine, so I decided to simplify the design of the vending machine. I realized I couldn't have five layers and detail everything. I couldn't have all those key slots and the, the card slot and the coin slot. So instead, I'm gonna go with a more Asian design of vending machine. I see this more around in Asia than I do in uh, white people, Western places, whereby it's not pushed out by a spring. It, the, all the mechanisms are inside. All you see on the display are what type of drinks you can select. Uh, and so I'm going to only have two slots here and there, there's not gonna be a spring there. It's all just gonna be, you know, a single display and you can hit the buttons on the display. I decided to go with what I did on my first one hour, 30 minute render where I just pushed out these two random blocks that add some detail to the object instead of just having it be like a plain red mesh. I don't know what they're for, but it, you know, it breaks up the breaks up the look of it. Does its job well enough in 30 minutes. Here I am, very, very fast red texture for the vending machine. I'm going very quickly on the inside to do all these textures first before I do the glass. Big mistake right there because I beveled everything and I didn't want to select all the edges. That cost me a few seconds, but here I am reselecting all the edges and manually beveling everything using the MoGraph, uh, using the MoGraph uh, uh, bevel shader. Before that, I just literally dragged in the MoGraph without selecting the edges. Uh, finally, we're adding in the glass right now because I've already done all this stuff on the inside. I don't have to bother hiding the glass material in order to select the stuff on the inside. That's just a bit of ergonomics right there. Thin down that little hole. It was way too big. Added a black texture under that and there you go. Now I'm moving the camera into the correct position so I you know, get the shape of the render that I want it to be. We're good to go here. And I drag in the cat. That's the final element that we have to put in. Uh, again, way big cat. Resize the cat. I didn't want to fiddle with the tail too much this time. Also realized that I was missing the bin as well as the cans of cola. I put one can of cola in there thinking that might be enough. I don't want to spend too much time cloning the cola, so I'm going to ignore it at one can. Drag the can in, uh, the, the rubbish bin in, rotate in the correct position, add in that reflective material. Uh, everything looks good in the render now. I realized everything does look a bit plain and does look a bit dark, so I have to do some fiddling to make it work. We repositioned the light a little bit because I, <laughs> I was trying to make things brighter. I decide uh, to leave that for now. It's missing a blue color. Let's add in that blue color by adding a big soda text there. I wasn't sure how I was gonna add that blue color, you know, that little display in the first render. I decide the soda text works well enough. It also shines with the blue light that I mentioned earlier, the blue shadow when I put the blue area light inside the machine. So that soda works. You know, it does its job fine. I didn't even bother changing the font or anything. Use the default font there. Realized the machine was a bit bland, messed up there with the soda distribution. So I just, instead of cloning it, I just, you know, manually copied it. Missed one can, but I realized, hey, it's art, it doesn't matter. Duplicated the light because one side of the render was being too dark and I realized here's an opportunity to add color. The opposite color that works very well with a cyan light blue is a pink color, pink slash magenta. Added that as a very faint spotlight in. And that just adds in the highlight from the other side. Um, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, there, there you go. Messing with the tail for the one last time. Didn't even bother setting up the pole because I realized it would be too much of a hassle. Rotated the cat this time, which was a genius idea to give it the cat a better silhouette so it's just easier to see where the cat is. Instead of rotating the light, I move it simply closer to the vending machine. This will allow a clearer render. I mess up the render there, wrong display port. 
Uh, and we finally get the correct render here. All in all, I think this was a relatively successful 30 minute render. What I learned here is that I spend a lot of my time in the modeling process and just by nulling the amount of time I spend modeling by giving it a simpler model, it saves a whole lot of time. So if you guys are on a you know short time frame and you need to get something done fast, modeling, consider cutting down the modeling. That might save you half the amount of time it takes to get the render out. Of course, do I think this compares to the original render or the render that I did in one hour, 30 minutes, uh, uh, or the render that I did in one hour, pardon me? No, no. I think that the one hour, 30 minute render looks better than anything that's about to come. And uh, you're, <laughs> you're about to see the 10 minute version. The 10 minute version is an absolute joke. Uh, for me, it's just whether a question, uh, it, it's a question of whether I can do something in 10 minutes that looks halfway decent. I never expect to get something that looks good in 10 minutes. It's just, what can I do? Will it be hilarious? Is it even possible to do? And you're about to find out. So right off the get-go, I knew I was short on time. I had to immediately do all the things I knew how to do. Ergonomics, everything, copy and pasting all the materials, getting all these textures in super fast for the geometry. I didn't even bother setting up the reflection profile correctly. I only set in a reflection map, didn't bother with the specular, didn't bother with the roughness, added a Fresnel because that's extremely important, rescaled all the textures into the correct size and never bothered touching it again. Displacement, bump map, normal map was all in super fast. Got this wall done extremely quickly, didn't even bother with the detail there. I didn't, I intentionally didn't bother texturing that bottom little curb because it was just a, such a little minor detail that nobody would see. Very quickly added this texture on, didn't bother setting up properly again. As long as it looked fine, it looked fine. That was, that's, you know, when you got 10 minutes, you can't fuss on the detail. Got that light in real fast. Render settings for ambient occlusion, global illumination, and glow in extremely quickly. Resolution of the camera, done. Setting up the camera first this time so that I can position the vending machine into where I want it instead of positioning the camera where I want it. Uh, very quickly saving the file without even naming it properly. Didn't even bother scaling the vending machine to the correct size. As you can see it's phasing through the back of the wall here. Uh, I realized again, I had to simplify the design of the vending machine way more. Couldn't even bother putting the white reflective there. So I had one big screen to show a Coca-Cola symbol and the ejection slot. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have put on some buttons there, you know, the black little buttons, but I didn't. Here, I'm instantly texturing the thing red. I don't think I even bothered putting on a uh, displacement map on it. No, I didn't. I added the black in the middle. This texture is actually from the can. Stole that right up. Rescaled it to fit. Worked well enough. Didn't even bother with you know trying to make it look seamless or anything. Uh, put that in the wrong channel, actually. Had to refix that and put it into the luminance channel so it would glow. Here I decided I still wanted that blue color but didn't know where I could put the glue on. Blue on. So I put on these four little buttons here thinking, hey, maybe there'd be blue buttons that you can click on. Turned it into a Reggie Pokemon. <laughs> it literally turned it into like a Reggie vendor or something if you guys play Pokemon. Uh, here, instantly dropping in the cat. Didn't bother with the tail. Had to render right away. That was nine minutes up already. Here's the render. Something went wrong. Uh, yes, this was the light. The light was missing. I forgot to turn on the volumetric light. Had to urgently get in there and get that light done. Renders out at nine minutes and here we are clutching 10 minutes. And I think the render was done on exactly 10 minutes. Here's the final result. Does it compare with anything that comes before? <laughs> Absolutely not, but it was done. It was done. I managed to do it, the road, everything is in place, the light is in place, the cat is in place, the vending machine is in place, walls are done, floor is done, all the effects are done, resolution is good, and it rendered all in 10 minutes. So it is possible. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone, I hope you enjoyed this new style of video. If you'd like to see more content just like this, there'll be a playlist linked right over here, so make sure you click on it, again subscribe and hit that bell icon if you have not already, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.